guys. So before I get started, I just wanted to announce that we have just released the new Easter mystery boxes. And I wanna give you a sneak peek of what's inside. We have a bunch of plushy unicorn keychains. They come in four different colors. We have so many different gorgeous necklaces that range from mermaids, fairies, crescent moons. We have so many of these that probably every person's going to get a different one. We have giant planet lip glosses. We have unicorn egg brushes that come in a bunch of different colors. And there's a couple other things that I know you guys are going to love. So everyone gets the same items in their box, but the colors and designs of each items are gonna be totally different and that's the mystery. So if you would like a mystery Easter box, they are limited time only and the link is down below in the description. Hey guys, it's Jessie V, and as you can see, I still have a new background behind me. I don't know why I said still, as if it's gonna like disappear all of a sudden. But it's basically a ton of colorful lanterns, even though I'm blocking so many of them, but they're so, so pretty. <laughs> Definitely my top favorites that I've had, even though I feel like I say that every single time. But if you would like to win it, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel, so my Jessie V channel, turn on your notification bell, and then head over to my Twitter page, follow me there, and comment your favorite Coraline character on my pinned tweet. And if you've never seen that movie, just comment, hey Jesse, I've never seen it, but I love your backdrop. Anyway, so guys, as you can tell by the title of today's video, we are going back to our fear series. I have not done one of these since probably the summer. Basically, each video was me talking about one specific fear that a lot of people have, and then I show you images associated with this fear to see if you have it yourself. Now, obviously, if you know for sure you have this fear, don't feel obligated to watch this video. I'm not making this to like make your fear worse. I would feel terrible if that was the case. This is more discovering if you have it, if you don't, or if you're just genuinely curious about this fear. We're actually covering two fears in this video. My hair's in my face. The first one is bathmophobia. Did I say that right? Bathmophobia. And no, it's not the fear of baths. Bathmophobia is the fear of slopes or stairs. So if you have bathmophobia, you might panic when simply observing a steep slope. So you don't even have to be on the slope to be afraid. You could be looking at pictures of slopes. You could be standing far away from a slope. You could be watching a movie that has slopes in it. Kind of like a steep drop, you're afraid. And and actually, this fear is more common with animals or pets, which I found super crazy. But when I really think about it, it totally makes sense because sometimes my dogs are afraid of going down specific stairs. And I've talked about it in my other video, they're so afraid of going down the basement stairs. And those stairs are steeper than the rest of my house. So have you ever noticed your pets like stare down the stairs like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And this fear is said to really impact people's lives because think about how many times a day you realistically use the stairs. I mean, I know for me, every single day I use them. I sleep upstairs, so to get downstairs for breakfast, I gotta use the stairs. There was this article I found while researching about this 43-year-old mother who literally has to go down the stairs on her butt because she's so afraid of standing up on the stairs. She just feels safer when she's closer to like the stairs. She even has to do it in public spaces, like at the mall, at her job, and she says it's really embarrassing for her and she's currently in the process of getting over that fear but that just shows you that people actually go through this in the world and it's really hard. Now it is said that a lot of people actually go to hypnotherapy for this fear. The hypnotic state allows people to explore painful thoughts, feelings, and memories they might have hidden from their conscious minds and it could also help people change some behaviors. So like in this woman's case it would be the behavior of being afraid of slopes and stairs. So I'm about to show some pictures of slopes and stairs that would make people with bathmophobia feel very uncomfortable. So if you know this is gonna freak you out, maybe don't look at the pictures, but if you're unsure or if you're just curious, continue watching. I never show anything like crazy or terrible. It's just sort of examples of what the fear is. And I'm actually terribly afraid of heights. So some of these might actually affect me more than I think they will. So this is the first picture. It's stairs and lookouts on this 
mountain. I'm not really sure where it is. These are definitely too steep for me. I would not be able to do this, especially because it's high up. This next one is the basement stairs, kind of like what I talked about before. I'm actually not afraid of going into my basement. It creeped me out as a kid, but I could definitely still do it just fine. But as you can see, there's like a creepy monster under there. The next picture is twisty stairs going up to what looks like a lookout or something like that. I'm actually not too bad with stairs that twist around because they're not really going straight up, but I feel like I would get super dizzy after a little while. Okay, these ones. <laughs> this is the one that really freaks me out. It's just because these stairs are kind of like wedged in between this crevice of this giant mounted rock. I just feel like they look so unstable and I personally would feel so scared going up and down them. But like everyone's different. This might make someone so excited to go there. All right, here's a picture of an escalator going down. I know when I was a kid, I was terrified of escalators. It just freaked me out that stairs moved. You know what I mean? All right, I don't know why this picture is in here, <laughs> but this is from, oh, what movie is it called? It's the woman the girl's possessed. But she goes down the stairs like that. I wonder if that was like a stunt person who actually had to go down the stairs backwards like that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so these are one of the steepest stairs in the entire world. It's almost just like climbing a wall, literally going up. You have to hold on to the chains on the side of the stairs to keep yourself stable. You might even have to be strapped in. I'm not really sure, but these literally go straight up. Here we have um, stairs on the side of the mountain that have no railing or anything, so you can walk as close to the edge as you want. Some people find this thrilling. I personally don't. Then we have spiral stairs that look just like normal ones in a house. These actually look kind of cool to me. They don't freak me out at all. Here's another picture of spiral stairs. The longer they go down, I guess the more they kind of like freak me out a little bit. Then people have some weird stairs in their house, I guess to be more modern and like creative and artistic, which I'm all for, but I feel like if they were as unstable looking as this, I probably wouldn't feel comfortable going on them. And then lastly, we have a creepy creature at the bottom of the basement stairs, which obviously no one wants to meet. So those are some examples of bathmophobia. If you feel comfortable saying if you have the fear or not, or if any of these pictures freaked you out, definitely comment it down below and we're gonna move on to our next fear. All right, this next fear I'm gonna have trouble pronouncing. I just know it. It's called acmophobia. Acmophobia? Acmophobia? Acmophobia is a phobia of sharp pointed objects. Those affected by acmophobia will feel anxious, worried, and fearful around any object that is sharp and could cause harm. This could include pencils, pens, needles, pins, scissors, and other common household items. And the problem with this fear is that a lot of people are afraid to go to doctor's offices or get their blood taken because of this fear. I used to be very afraid of getting my blood drawn to the point where my parents would have to drag me on the floor to the lab because I would not go. And I've been really sick all my life with different things, so it was very important for me to get my blood drawn. I would sit on the floor and be like, well, drag me because I'm not walking there. I remember my mom one time pulling me to the lab to get my blood taken, and I was screaming and pulling away and like calling for help, and this man had to be like, are you being kidnapped right now? Do you need me to help you? And I was like, no, I don't want needles. And I was literally like 14. Like this has been a lifelong thing for me. With me having Lyme disease now, I actually have to get my blood taken every single month. So I feel like I've gotten more used to it, but I still have a meltdown every time I'm there. Maybe not as much as I used to because it's so like routine for me now, but I definitely have this fear, no doubt. Sometimes you just have to think like, what's worse, your health getting terrible or you just getting a needle for like 20 seconds. Some people with this fear are even afraid to cook and be in the kitchen because as you know, when you cook, you're around a lot of sharp things and people are just afraid of being even near them. But I'm gonna show you some picture examples of this fear. So like I said before, if you know you have this, don't feel obligated to keep looking at the pictures. You don't have to subject yourself to that. But if you're curious or just wonder, continue watching. Okay, so this first picture had to be there. It is the one from Sleeping Beauty. She's actually my favorite princess ever. This was the only part of the movie that really bothered me. When I was a kid, I'd actually close my eyes at this part because I couldn't, it just freaked me out to see her finger being pricked by the spindle. So if you were a kid and this part actually bothered you, you might have this fear like I do. Okay, woo, woo. People put in things near their eyes. Freaks me out. We actually did a fear like this probably six months ago, but 
Oh, this is, is it a sea anemone? Sea urchin. And obviously they are super prickly. You do not want to step on one of these. They will hurt like heck. But even looking at one of these, it just gives me like pins and needles everywhere. Okay, this is a puffer fish. <laughs> I don't really know why this one is in here. I guess because he kind of gets spiky. These things, these things are the worst thing in the world. When I was a kid and I would play in the playground, I would always come home with like 57 of these in my hair, on my sweater, on my backpack, literally everywhere. I would take them to bed and wake up in the morning and be like, how did 104 of these get into my bedroom? Ugh, I hate these. Okay, so this is a cactus that has pointy stuff on it. I actually adopted a cactus this summer and he passed away like two weeks ago. But I had named him Spike Wazowski. He was the cutest little cactus in the whole entire world. He didn't live very long. I don't know why. I like watered him when I was supposed to. He was in the sunshine. He had everything he needed. He didn't make it, but it always freaked me out when I got close to him because he was really spiky, but I still cared for him very much. Sharp, sharp pencils. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, I liked to use pens more than pencils, but when I had to use pencils, I would make sure they weren't like sharp to the point of this. I would make sure they were just sharp enough that I could use it because I feel like when they were super sharp, they would just break anyway, you know? And then you have animals that are prickly like porcupines. I actually think they're very, very cute. You have some sharp architecture which I feel like makes me uncomfortable to look at, but I definitely am not like afraid of sharp <laughs> architecture. But yeah, those are all of the examples I'm gonna give of that fear. And definitely comment down below if you have it or if any of these pictures made you think that maybe it freaks you out. But uh, definitely let me know if you want me to continue this series because there are so many fears. I think there's like hundreds of fears that are weird, but a lot of people have them. So if you want me to continue the series, definitely give this video a thumbs up and let me know but I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!